see here. It's being recorded. Okay. So <clears throat> I'd like to go through um, a uh, the agenda that I have up here and uh, do need to uh, uh, kind of um, address a, a, a new functionality that's been added. It was actually on our to-do list, but it was a little lower priority. And uh, based on um, some, some needs that we uh, had that were requested to uh, make that a higher priority, and also uh, the um, level of effort uh, that was involved, we felt that um, we could get this capability included. And then actually some of the other uh, items that have been on the agenda or part of the de design development for uh, the, the version uh, 3.21 have been deferred to 3.22. And as we've discussed, some of these are, are actually very large undertakings. So, um, so rather than continue to wait to get 3.21 uh, completed, we um, added this capability of currency conversion <clears throat> and then uh, deferred uh, these other three uh, topics to the 3.22. So let me go through, um, we haven't talked about this currency conversion, but I actually have uh, it available <clears throat> to, uh, to, to go through. And um, it's very simple, easy to use, but very powerful in that it takes TAMs into, the, you know, uh, you know, makes it a, an international tool. Of course, it's always supported U.S. and, and Canada. Um, suppliers and the North American dialing plan in general, so that covers a lot of other, you know, smaller countries. But um, we um, uh, did not have the capability. Every account was always based uh, with its cost in, a, in its native um, currency. So if you have clients that are in USA and Canada and they have accounts, maybe sometimes with uh, Canadian providers such as Telus <coughs> or Bell Canada and they're billing in Canadian dollars, and then you have other accounts in the U.S. in American dollars, then the, the problem is, well, if you want to invoice your client in a single currency such as U.S. dollars only, then you need to convert the savings of the Canadian accounts into American dollars. Um, <clears throat> so does anybody here on the call uh, today have that situation? No. No, no. Oh. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, we have some others, and in fact, I know there's some Abilita folks that uh, have that situation, and uh, uh, we actually have that situation, and then there's a couple of others. Uh, and <clears throat> it had not been uh, um, a major issue, like I said, but uh, it, it has risen in, in uh, urgency. And so um, what we did was a real simple approach. Um, and I think that it's it's uh, it's great. So let's see here. I'm going to go in and take a uh, uh, Telus uh, supplier, and you'll see here that um, we can change. I don't know why this said United States here, but basically, um, if the uh, country is set to Canada, maybe I can find another one like Rogers or somebody. Rogers. Here we go. Rogers Wireless. Uh, that had U.S. in it too. Uh, how about Rogers? Canada. Yeah, still have them all set. But anyway, um, it would. We added a new field onto the supplier details which is a billing currency, and basically it will set the currency. You notice it can be blank, U.S. dollars, or Canadian dollars. <clears throat> the implementation of this um, tech capability is very extendable to other currencies. Right now we just wanted to get U.S. and Canada covered, but in order for us to extend it to other currencies, all we have to do is a database update to add some other currencies into an internal table, and then it will enable other currency conversions. Uh, but wanting to not make it too, you know, too, too difficult uh, and and prone to error. If we put too many currencies on there, then somebody could easily, you know, have the wrong currency selected. So whenever a currency is, uh, a, you know, this is the default for a provider, and you'll notice that it gives you some little information over here under the form details. So if you go and create a new account for um, a uh, 
client and let's go to this client and and let's add an account and we do uh, that Rogers wireless for Canada and I'll just say two three save it and you'll notice that it now sets the currency as the default currency but it's quite possible that eight like larger companies like AT&T they may have billing options where on a given a client account they may be able to bill in a different currency depending on where they invoice to and all so you can still override the defaults okay and again um, <clears throat> there are uh, there's a blank setting which <clears throat> in essence um, if you leave a currency blank then there will be no conversion that takes place um, and uh, if you uh, have it set on a specific account like Canada and then um, the clients is set there's a new setting for what the preferred billing currency is <clears throat> to invoice to the client so it says here needed for currency conversions of international accounts so if the client wants to be billed in US dollars and all of the accounts that are specified are in US dollars there's no conversion or, you know as long as they match each other there's no conversion or if if the client is left blank there will be no conversions whatsoever you can ask for conversions but um, you know single out individual accounts to not be converted uh, so there's there's it's a very it's a flexible uh, design <clears throat> and then what um, what will happen is if you have an account with a, a different uh, currency then it will take the dollar amount that is billed in like this is Verizon Wireless it'll take the dollar amount of the total computed costs and it will apply a billing adjustment to based on the conversion exchange rate now where does it get that from well there's a new uh, administrative uh, just like we have the Federal Universal Service fee table that changes quarterly we have a currency exchange table that you can specify with whatever level of resolution you would like to have you can see that actually the Canadian dollar the US dollar has uh, strengthened significantly over the past two years from a dollar six cents on January of 2014 <clears throat> up to January of 2016 to a dollar 38 Canadian actually uh, February it's now broken a dollar uh, 40 and so um, you can add a new exchange rate when you start to add a new record it always defaults to the US dollar as the base uh, exchange but you can change it and again if we wanted to expand this to pesos or euros or whatever it's just a matter of us adding a couple of uh, entry an entry into a table for each currency um, and then uh, the Canadian is also the default uh, and so we could say that on February 1st the exchange rate is one point uh, four zero zero three or whatever it is enter and so now when I save this it puts it into the table so what will happen is for each of the billing cycles it will find the the most the closest prior uh, entry in this table and you can put it in every day if you wanted to um, but it'll find the closest prior entry and then use that as the exchange rate and you and put in a billing adjustment and the billing adjustments for each account apply to both the um, baseline costs as well as the optimized costs. So, um, you know, if you cut a cost by, um, well, let's just say I have a $1,400 savings in Canadian dollars, um, it's going to turn that into a $1,000 savings U.S. So that's a significant differential back when you know this wasn't quite a priority when there was only a you know like the dollar was one to one roughly a couple years ago um, then you know the exchange rate wasn't wasn't as relevant but now you're talking about a 40 percent differential in, in uh, currencies so converting you know $1,400 Canadian savings into a thousand dollars US is a, quite a, a difference in the billing to a client and furthermore it will do this on both the baseline and optimized uh, side of the equations so that um, the billing adjustments are incorporated uh, you know um, 
equitably. And in fact, you can even take a client that is billing, like I had a client years ago like this, they were getting an, a, a Canadian bill for their 20 MPLS locations in Canada, and it was in Canadian dollars. We optimized them so that the, that billing in those locations got billed in U.S. dollars. And so the baseline was one currency, and the optimized was a different currency. Uh, it was a different account, but, uh, um, you know, it could track, oh, in Canadian dollars, the baseline, that gets converted to American dollars. The, the optimized is already in American dollars. It does not get, op you know, it does not get converted. It's already in, in the dollars we want. And so um, there would only be a adjustment in that case on the baseline calculations. It, it, is that clear how, how it's implemented? It, it's a simple interface to use and uh, very flexible. Yeah. Okay, so here's the here's the here's one uh, caveat to be aware of though. It's for the invoices. So you know when you come in and do a, an invoice, what we did not incorporate for this release, and and is maybe something that is not uh, you know totally uh, considered you know when dealing with multinational uh, organizations and and currencies is some of our curves, like our cost curves, like on cellular, that shows the historical spend profile, well, those could be mixed currencies, actually, where um, it's going to uh, um, you know, show the cost of a, you know, the spend level of a client. And yet, uh, it could be that some of the accounts are in America. Well, that's a really big, a big time frame I put there, you know. But um, some of these uh, costs, when they're combined like that, could be U.S. dollars. No, this could be Canadian dollars. So we will want to talk about maybe, you know, this is just another step down a path that w w will build us a bridge into more, um, you know, international and multi-currency management uh, issues. But um, at least the billing will uh, be, you know, available for um, currency conversion. A any questions or comments about that? Okay. So the three items that were deferred um, were the online supplier database uh, for importing and, and sharing um, between yourself and others, you know, in a community uh, database. Uh, arrangement. Um, the total cost of ownership tool uh, for looking at equipment costs and, and the you know one-time billing credits and uh, uh, differences in, in prices, monthly recurring costs for you know when it's under contract or when it's not under contract or when it's uh, un under one of their leasing options you know. Um, we have a spreadsheet that, that serves that, that need right now but you know we were going to build that capability into the TAMS tool um, and again, it kind of because there's already a spreadsheet sheet solution, you know, it um, uh, you know isn't a uh, an urgent need, but uh, we still would like to get that incorporated in the next release. And then uh, this is the b biggest by far uh, software development effort, and that is instead of future dating uh, optimizations in the live history, that is to be able to put them into a sandbox uh, category. And then uh, say, okay, take the current scenario uh, of services and accounts, and then uh, and then overlay these uh, sandbox changes during our analysis, but not have to keep those changes in in the live history uh, of each service thread. And uh, and then once uh, something's approved, being able to promote those analysis changes over into the live history. Uh, so you can see that obviously there's a lot of interfaces. You have to be able to look at them. You have to be able to add them and delete them and edit them. And so it's kind of like everything we do in the live thread in the live thread, but we have to mirror all that capability in the um, in a in a sandbox environment. So it's uh, it's it's pretty tricky. Um, or it's an extensive amount of changes and testing that's involved. Um, so we would expect to, um, we have the 3.21 uh, in beta trials right now. Uh, and so we would uh, be sending it out probably at the end of this week if uh, we don't have any um, glitches identified and um, 
and then the hosted environment will probably be upgraded. Usually we give the standalone users um, you know, a, a few days to upgrade themselves and gives us even more data points that there's, you know, and confidence that there's every, everything's good. And then we do the nine servers in the hosted data environment, uh, and that'll probably be towards the end of next week. So whenever we get that uh, done, it will there will be an announcement coming out. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So I do want to spend a few minutes. I'm a little ahead of schedule here. Um, and any questions or comments about that? Of course, that's not the only content in the release. We've covered, you know, in prior, um, you know, sessions, uh, a lot of the other content that's in there. And of course, under the Tams versions, you can see, you know, what's been uh, what's been done in terms of new functionality and user enhancements and so on. So. Um, I, I wanted to take a, a little bit of time to go through um, a best practice because I think that it's something that is um, not intuitive uh, why this is a best practice and uh, um, I want to, uh, I've kind of got this demoed up here to, to demonstrate it um, so that uh, everybody can kind of see I'm going to get rid of this Rogers uh, account just because it's not necessary. Okay. But basically, this topic is about um, either new accounts or sub-accounts. Of course, when you create a new account, you always get a sub-account that goes with it. So um, this is the best practice for when a new uh, – I'm just going to use a sub-account just so I don't have to switch between accounts. It will be easier uh, to describe. Um, but uh, whenever you're doing an optimization, and this pertains to anything, but I'm going to say it's uh, mostly relevant to Verizon Wireless on cellular accounts, but it can also apply, you know, to landline accounts uh, and other carriers. But I think the Verizon Wireless will probably be, you know, people will connect with that more so than anything else. Um, and that's because of the way Verizon Wireless bills, and that is for their share pools, they put the cost of the pool on uh, the account, not on an individual device. And actually, this issue that we're going to talk about also could pertain to AT&T Wireless, where they put all the cost of the, and the allowances on a single primary member of, of the pool. Um, and uh, of course, um, there's consequences uh, with, with both of those. But let me walk you through this real quick. and. Uh, and then I'll take some questions here. Um, so what I've done is I've created a, uh, uh, a client where I'm only going to look at one location that I set up with some data devices. Um, and there's right initially, let's presume that there's three hotspots. That they um, those hotspots um, exist. Uh, I think their data plan is um, back in February of 2014. They're on standalone five gigabyte data plans with Verizon Wireless, so this is a real plan, $59.99, eligible for discount, five gig of allowance, and they used to bill this as an older plan uh, at five cents per megabyte in overage. So um, not shared, just standalone full, uh, devices, and um, what we have is an account that uh, has these three standalone data devices, and uh, they have a sub-account. Forget about this second one here. I've got that primed to, to show kind of what this whole topic is about. But here's the standalone data devices. Um, they do get a 22% discount on their monthly recurring charges, but there's no monthly fee at the account level because these are all standalone devices. There's no allowance, no overage on the, on the, on the sub-account whatsoever. So it's just designated as the baseline. And um, when we come in and uh, look at their billing for, let's say, April, because we're going to optimize them um, on, uh, I think, May 1st or something like that. Let's see, when do we optimize them? Optimize them May 8th. Don't ask me why it's the 8th. Um, OK, so in April, the billing is real um, straightforward. I only have a data plan. I put uh, six gig of usage on each of them. So of course, they're five gig allowance each. They each go over by a gig. 
Um, and not that the overage is that important. I just wanted to put, show you, you know, a kind of a scenario that might be similar to a real world uh, scenario. So each one ends up with a total cost of 98.15. There's their 59.99, less their discount for their net monthly. There's their allowance. There's their usage. The overage would be $51.20, and they on the region that you're in, 16 cents on those for, I forget what they call them, regular, you know, admin fee or something like that. Anyway, so $294.45, and, uh, and again, there's no cost or anything on the sub account. All right, now what do we do? We come in and we say, hey, we're going to optimize you, and we're going to put you on to a more everything with 20 gig, because we were using 18, so let's get a 20 gig pool. And what do we do? We create a new sub account. We come in here and we say add sub account, give it a name, tell it, say it's optimized. And I put the date on here just a day before the um, the uh, uh, off the services that I move over to the new plans on each of the three devices. And I put five, four, seven uh, initial configuration and a 20 gig data pool on a data only pool with Verizon Wireless after 22% discount. That's out to be uh, 8580. Okay, I still put on the 22% um, in case there's something else that is in this sub account that does get a, you know monthly recurring. Although on a share everything, you know the access plans don't get uh, the discount, but I put the percentages there anyway. Um, I say, hey, it's got a 20 gig allowance. It goes 15 dollars per uh, gig on overage, and I go and I. Um, uh, Optimize each of these three, you know, using the managed services on, on like I said, I have them set on 5.8 to go to the share everything jetpack. They're in that new more everything uh, sub sub account, and the plan that they're on has a $10 access fee. It does not get a discount, eight cents in local fees, and they all share into the pool. They don't have their own allowance or their own overage. So pretty straightforward scenario. We go and we um, uh, May comes along. We get another bill. You can see the cost of the bill has dropped, um, and we still put the same usage in there: six gigs on each device. And we calculate our costs, and we can see that uh, each device is costing ten dollars and eight cents, and that the pool has uh, a, an allowance of 20 gig. This is in megabytes actually, but it's 20 gig, and the data usage is a little is 18 gig. So there's the pool cost of 85.80, and we come down to 116 dollars and four cents. So if we come back to the um, to the account, and notice I have that one checked as not being invoiced, and I go to the client and I um, go ahead and generate a savings invoice, and I'm going to do this by account so that we can kind of see the baseline configuration and the optimized configuration uh, separately. And so you can see the baseline, there's an 01 account, they uh, have a single billing cycle, they're on the three standalones, and I can drill in and look at that, but it's basically 294.45, which matches, now this is working off of our, May, our, um, our uh, I'm, I'm, I misclicked here, we're working off of our May billing cycle, but notice it does produce the baseline of 294.45 cost, even though you know we're that's what TAM's supposed to do, right? It's supposed to compute what they would have paid under their old plans. The optimized is 116.04. <coughs> excuse me, and um, 116.04 that matches, and so our savings is the difference between those two. It's a 60% cost reduction, and there's our invoice amount. Okay, everything looks great, right? Well, here's the consequences that we wanted to talk about, and that's this why we have a best practice that I wanted to, to share with everybody. So let's say um, on uh, on six one, the client adds a new hotspot. They're like, "Hey, these hotspots are great. They're not costing us very much now. Let's go ahead and 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 add one." So we go in and we add history. <clears throat> for June 1st, so that's after the May billing cycle, but before the June billing cycle, and what do we do? We create a baseline, and we put the plan on there, and it's the same plan as the others. So that 
device, let's go to the, the um, June, and it basically adds $10.08 uh, to the t current cost. So if I come in, I can see that there's three of them still with the same usage. Let's just say they haven't even turned this hotspot on yet. They haven't even started using it, so there's no usage. That's not really relevant uh, to the you know to the concept here. But I didn't want to change the usage to you know make make any other numbers be effective. So of course we do see a new opt baseline or a new optimized or well it's a new baseline and optimized cost of 1008. Now. If you wanted to, and this is up to, I know different people use different business models, and that certainly what you could do is you could back this up one day and put a 5 gig mobile broadband as a baseline and then put the uh, optimized on there the next day for 24 months or 23 months or whatever you want to bill for, and then you could bill for the MRC savings and whatnot uh, between, you know, kind of like, well, Without our optimization, we still want to bill you for some savings. But even if you don't do that, let's just say, like, um, you just say, well, the client added a new device, and we're not going to, we don't want that to affect our savings whatsoever. We want it to be savings neutral. Now, you have the choice, you know, so of, of putting in a double entry. But in, in, I want to follow down this path of, let's just say we want that new device to get added in, but we want it to be savings neutral. Okay. So... What happens when we go and invoice this client? Because the current cost um, did go up by $10.08 from the prior month. But what happens to the baseline cost? Well, let's go run another invoice, and let me see here. I'm going to uh, uh, change which billing cycle I want to invoice for. I'm just going to do the, the June one now for June 28th. And I go to the client, and I'll generate the exact same um, report. And uh, you know, if we go down to the to the bottom, sure enough, um, the uh, well, let's look at the optimized. The optimized goes to 126.12, which it did because you know the cost did uh, um, go up by by ten dollars and eight cents. So 126.12. But what happened to the baseline? Well, the baseline went up significantly. In fact, it went up $95.88. And understanding why it did that is, is, and which means if your baseline goes up by $95.88, your savings go up by $95.88 also. So uh, instead of it being two ninety four or uh, plus $10.08, it went up $95.80. And, and if we drill down on it, it's real easy to understand. The Share everything pool now has a, a new baseline on it when that new hotspot got added. So not only is that ten dollars and eight cents included in the baseline, but because it's tied to the sub account, it also now says that there's an eighty five eighty uh, on the pool, and um, that. Uh, really didn't exist back in the beginning of time when you started with the client. There was no 8580. So by adding a baseline to a sub-account that is an optimized sub-account, you can inadvertently pull in these pool costs that are on the sub-account. You know, um, in fact, if, there's, if you have like AT&T uh, and you had a primary member that had all the pool allowance with it, and and that notice where did the where did the, the other three phones go? Well, they went back to their baseline on the standalone sub account and on their fifty nine ninety nine less their twenty two percent discount. So they all are considered to be back on their original baselines. If you did that with a uh, somebody that had a um, primary allowance in the pool, you'd also perhaps see usage charges here just because you've added a new a new uh, device. So how do we handle this extra 8580 in the baseline that we don't really want? Well, it's real simple, okay? And that is when you create a new account or a new sub-account, like I said, it doesn't matter whether this sub-account is part of an existing account or the new sub-account is in a new account, um, what you should do is put in a double entry for these new sub-accounts. So let me just show this. And again, this is depending upon your... Um, your particular business practice and what it is you want to achieve. 
But if you don't want to have um, the uh, inadvertent uh, uh, pool costs showing up, 8580, 22, 22, 22, 20 gig allowance and a 15 overage save. I'm going to put in an entry that looks like an optimization, and this is now the date that my service history. So this is the very first date, and you can go back and look at the uh, uh, account history and group by sub account and group by change date, and you can see the very first date that uh, any history got put on there was 5.8. So on um, 5.7, the initial configuration of this account, well, initially this, you know, or you want to call it a baseline configuration, it did not exist, so it didn't cost anything, it didn't have any allowance, and it didn't have any overage. So I put in a, a dummy, empty record that's kind of like, just like if you, uh, let's say you, you have to incur a new charge on the landline side when you answer like, oh, they didn't used to have a router charge, but now when I switch them over to POTS lines, to PRIs or SIP trunking, they now pay $35 a month for a router lease. Well, you would start off with a zero cost record and then put in the optimization of $35 for a router charge, which is a negative savings, but then would um, you know be compensated by all the other savings for for going from pots lines to sip trunking. So just like we we do here, when we create a new optimized account or sub account, we put in a zero record. The very next day, we put in 24 months. Now, what does that accomplish? Well, it accomplishes a lot. When we come over to uh, the client and we uh, regenerate the same invoice. The three phones that are the hotspots that were uh, truly optimized baseline, they still go back to their baseline just like they did before, 294.45. But the one new device that got added, and remember this doesn't even, even if you add like a handset insurance, as soon as you tie something to that sub account, it's going to use this, um, in the baseline calculations, it's going to use the baseline record. Notice that dummy record now doesn't have that monthly recurring fee, so I'm not picking up that extra $85.80 on the baseline side just because somebody added the handset insurance as a new baseline or a new device get, gets added in or something along, along those lines. So um, it gives you uh, a lot of uh, control by simply adding a, a a second entry into the sub account, um, and there's even uh, benefits beyond um, this uh, capability. Let's say, for example, that because of this new device, and you, and you don't want to bill for the new device, um, and again, you can if you want to, but if you, um, let's say that you have to increase this to a 30 gig because the new device is adding more usage. So we're going to come in here and add a billable change and we're going to put it on 7 1 of 2014 and uh, increase pool to 30 gigabyte. And I don't know what the cost is for a 30 gigabyte pool, but I'm just going to pick a number and say it's a hundred and let's say uh, 20 bucks because, uh, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll make it really easy on myself. 125 880 so it goes up uh, $40, 22 22 22 and make this now a 30 gig with a 15 overage. Great. But I don't want to uh, lose savings because I had to increase the, the cost here. So what I can do is I can offset, you know, this is like an operational change. They've added devices. We need to increase the pool to keep them optimized. But, and uh, you know, if, but we don't want to lose the $40 because they went from 85 80 to 125 I can come back here and put $40 on my billable baseline and make that a 10 gig allowance if I want to. So you, you can use that, that original baseline configuration. I mean, that's taking it to another level than what, uh, you know, what we would normally uh, do, but that's a, maybe a rare case, but it is a flexibility that you have where you can adjust you know, what you want the baseline cost to be versus your, obviously, your optimized is going to have to match the billing. 
So uh, I think that um, kind of illustrates the, the issue of uh, how um, a double entry, let me go ahead and close this or delete that record, how a double uh, entry having a zero baseline on new sub-accounts is, is beneficial to avoid some inadvertent uh, pool costs or monthly recurring charges in the sub-account. Okay. So, what, what uh, comments or questions about that? I don't. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, so give me a yeah. little while. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I mean, look, it's real simple, right? All you do is create a zero record entry on new yeah. accounts or sub-accounts, and then the next day put in your optimization so that any secondary, new secondary, or, you know, any new devices, and that's what I was showing here, is I added another device in, into a pool that didn't exist initially, right? It didn't, it wasn't in my baseline. Um, but if we wanted to, you know, uh, you know, go back to duplicating, let's come back to the device details. Let's say I want to treat this new device like all of the others. Well, that's even easier because all I have to do is take an existing baseline, clone it, call it, I'm going to call it 105, 1005, and then uh, notice it's going to have both history records in here. And of course, I would need to change the dates and say like, okay, well, this is in 7, uh, 8 is when it uh, was added, but I'm going to make this 7-7. Um, seven, seven, uh, and now, it, this record doesn't affect any of the old billing cycles, and only the billing cycles after uh, July, starting in July will this one show up, and it will refer to a kind of a artificial baseline that we've chosen to establish as a billable baseline for added devices. That's another business model which works just fine, and you can see how easy that was if I wanted to treat this new device as a, uh, you know, uh, it, it, with the same savings characteristics, it maybe I don't want 24 months, maybe I only want 22 months if I've already billed them for two months for May and June. But, um, you know, we can add devices uh, with, and I do it by cloning, it's pretty easy, uh, but just change the date so they don't affect any old billing cycles and put in your remaining duration. So, you know, the, and there's, how would you there's adjust a, the, uh, so how would okay. you adjust the size of the pool how would you adjust the size of the pool in this case? Oh, well, like I said, <laughs> you would do it with a, uh, a sub-account uh, ch billable change and put in if you need to increase the pool. I guess that's your question. I mean, obviously, if the 20 gig is still sufficient, you um, right. don't need to. But let's say you have to right. go to a 25 gig, right? And again, I don't know what the charge is. I'm just going to round it and say 100. 22, 22, 22. But let, look, this, look at this, Lou. I can also come in and click the remaining duration link, and it knows, oh, I already had a May and a June billing cycle. This is going to take effect in July, okay? Mm -hmm. And so it calculated that, hey, I already had two billing cycles in there, um, so it's going to um, uh, do that computation, and I click Save. Now you can see that I did have to increase the pool, uh, and it's only for uh, a remainder of 22 months, um, and it now has a 25 gig allowance. But of course, I'm now accommodating another device uh, uh, with um, 22 months of billable savings, and it's going to have its own artificial baseline, even though it never really was on a 5 gig mobile broadband. You know, I can treat it that way. You know, all mm -hmm. savings in TAMS, are, there's always a before and an after. If you only have one record on something, you will not have savings because it's, you know, uh, uh, it's right. going to compare to itself, right? So there's always a before and after for there to be savings. But sometimes you don't want these unintended savings coming in from a sub-account if you only had one baseline and somebody added handset insurance because the client's going to say, well, how come the baseline says that I was paying $85.50 and, and, uh, on my baseline when that account didn't even exist? And that's a valid question for a client to ask, right? And so by mm -hmm. putting in a double entry, you avoid that scenario. But you may want to have, you know, uh, something that is um, 
billing for added devices. Certainly, even if I added a handset insurance to a device, I would still end up with that 8580 the way it was originally configured. Right when it was um, all, the 8580, and there was only one record here, and it had 8580. As soon as I add another uh, baseline to that account, that 8580 starts to show up in my baseline. And this this technique could also be used if a customer converts a device, say from a basic phone to a smartphone. So you could um, oh right do something similar. You know where you could you have baseline cost for the smartphone and the basic phone and so you just adjust the baseline cost for that device that, that makes yeah sense? let me let, you know what I'm going to do I think I can uh, show you an example of how we do it um, and uh, uh, you know not everybody's businesses are, are, are run a, 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 you know the same um, so um, it's you know it's it's a tool it's a calculator but let me show a uh, device here I'm gonna go to um, uh, let me just view device details uh, um, data. I want to. I, I want to share this with you. How we would do a um, what account move device? I'm looking for an upgrade uh, from a flip phone to a smartphone to help answer uh, your question. Let me see if I can find one here. What I should do is just go to the account and look under the change description. I mean, obviously, I, I need to create another record that to compare to. Yeah. Right. And I guess what I'm asking is, do you um, edit the existing record? And so, if, if the person has has a basic phone, goes to a smartphone, and so when I put in the new cost for the smartphone, suddenly there's no savings, right? Because let's say the basic phone cost forty dollars, the smartphone used to cost eighty. <coughs> And now right. he takes that basic phone and moves it up to something that's like forty dollars still, and so it looks like it's the same thing. Yeah. So I would like to compare it back to the baseline of eighty for the smartphone. That is, that's what he used to pay for his smartphones. So there's there's even a bigger yeah. saving, so, man. Not okay. <clears throat> so this is where the the cost of a um, phone in a like a more everything is um, you know they charge. I'm, I think if you, we take a look at this. Uh, we have the talk at uh, $20, and it's unlimited talk, peak, off peak, mobile, mobile. <coughs> we throw our 911 charges in here for the local fees and the you know regulatory and admin. We put that all under the talk. So there's $20, and the messaging. I think we make $10. Yep, $10. And the um, the for a smartphone. We had a ten dollar uh, differential because it used to be thirty dollars for a basic phone and forty dollars for a smartphone. And then there were, there's discounts and things that can come in, and you can use we 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 model those as ancillaries. Um, you know, we, like a ten dollar feature phone or a five dollar smartphone with, under a new contract. It's fifty percent off if it's out of contract or whatever. You know, uh, twenty five dollars off, I guess, out of contract. So we we handle the discounts, and that and that mirrors the way it's billed. Also, they look separate line items on the bill, so it reads you know one to one like, hey, what you see in TAMS, what you see on the bill, look the same. But right, we we had a, a basic phone. And it used to be in a voice pool. And it was on this dollar ninety nine pays you go uh, per megabyte, and that was the way it was. And it never had usage, though. I mean, if I go and show a usage just on that one history record, <clears throat> you're going to see. Oh, it, it back in twenty fourteen, <clears throat> uh, before we optimized them over into a more everything pool. Oh, I guess they did have maybe one megabyte every once in a while. So they got charged, and it matched, right? We reconciled the bill. So dollar ninety nine this month, dollar ninety nine that month, dollar ninety nine here and there. Okay. So what do we do? We move optimize them on uh, twelve nineteen, 
of uh, 2014 into a more everything pool. So we moved them off the voice pool into a talk, messaging, and a feature phone data plan, which had no monthly recurring cost. So their $30 was on talk and, and messaging, talk and text components on their services. If they did have usage, it's still shared, so that one megabyte every few months would still go into the share pool, right? You know, 20 gig or 100 gig, whatever we had. We had them in a uh, 200 gig, you know, at a price of 100, so it was a 100, 200 promo. Okay. Well, now they upgraded just last December. So what do we do? Well, it would not be fair for us to turn around and, um, and by the way, we can look and see, did they have usage, you know, during the, uh, the share every, uh, when they were in the, as a feature phone? Uh, yeah, they had one megabyte one month. So say, we saved $1.99 that month, right? Because both of them have a zero MRC. This one was the baseline. This was the optimized. And now they go to a smartphone. Well, just two months worth. Oh, look, they had one gigabyte and 2.3 gigabytes. If we were to keep this as an optimization, and I'll just go in here and let's just say uh, out of back in 2014, let's just say we did remaining duration for uh, 12 months. Okay. Well, where's the billable baseline? It's this yellow record right here. It would take that two gigabyte and say, well, based on your billable baseline, you would have paid, you know, um, 2.3 uh, gig times a dollar 99 per megabyte. Basically, you would have paid about forty-six hundred dollars in data usage. Okay, well that's not right. fair to just because they upgraded their phone to all of a sudden say, "Well, I saved you forty-six hundred dollars in data usage." Okay, so right. what do we do? We make this a zero duration as an upgrade, but only on but only on their data because that's we consider that a operational change. That's not an optimization. Um, so our $10 that they now are charging, because it's $40 instead of $30, A, we're not losing $10 on the monthly recurring. B, we're not billing them $4,600 in savings for the usage. Right? It's, it's now green, which means it's current and baseline. So by putting a zero, you're re-baselining you know, that particular service. That has nothing to do with the optimizations that we still have in place, we don't even have to put, you know, other changes in here. Um, actually, this one and this one are, are are redundant as long as they're in the same account. Yeah, they're, those are redundant, um, so they don't, you know, with the prior one. We didn't even need the, these one records in here, but they didn't hurt anything to be put in there because they're, you know, it's just a remaining duration calculation. So, um, so really all we needed to have was this one zero duration. But Lou, I think in your case, what you're saying is, if you want this to refer back to a different baseline, not the dollar ninety nine per meg, and not the zero feature, but some other, let's say, you know, uh, billable baseline that you'd like to establish, then you would well, make a this smartphone plan. baseline. Yeah, yeah smartphone yeah, baseline. Be, well, then you would have a right. double entry. You do two three or twelve three and twelve four, and on twelve three you'd put your smartphone baseline, and then on twelve four you'd put in your optimization and whatever duration you want—a new twenty-four month or some remainder of a prior twenty-four month. Right. So you, you know, so and, and I you can, can put in whatever I want for billable. Right? The billable duration is fully added. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because usually what I do is I do it for the rest of the contract period, so I don't reset the billing period. Right. So let's right. say it happens in the 13th month or something like that. Well, then I just do another right. 11 months. You know? And that's yeah. why okay. when you when you put in the optimization over here, you can say remaining duration. And for every service that you've checked, you know that you and on this date, I mean, you could can have different things going in at different times and different remaining durations. Well, it does a service by service calculation of the remaining duration for you. And of course, if it's yeah. if it's not been optimized or the optimization has expired, then the remaining duration gives you a zero, and that's all you know described in the help files. <clears throat> so, um, but yes, so so you get it that the, that you have yeah. complete control what you want your billable baseline to be. Okay, great. I don't have any yep. more questions. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm good so far. Okay. Well, that was, you know, like I said, the best practice that I wanted to go over was this sub-accounts, and when you have a new sub-account, 
you sh landline or cellular. I mean, it wouldn't hurt, it, you know, um, to always put in a, just as a best practice, always put in that double entry uh, so that the. But hey, a lot of sub accounts they don't have any costs associated with them anyway, particularly on the landline side. Um, all of the costs are con confined to the plans that are on the lines of service. Um, but we just are like, you know what, we'll just put in a double entry and it protects against that un undesirable, you know, baseline uh, cost getting, getting added in inadvertently when you don't really want it. And then, and then the client, you know, A, you're, you're billing your, you may be billing your client inappropriately and B, they're going to question and say, well, why, you know, I, do you have this in my baseline when I didn't even have that account to begin with? Right. So, okay. So, um, uh, Let's see here. And then I also wanted to go uh, just, we missed it last month. We should have had it on our list, but the Federal Universal Service fee rate has increased to 18.2 for the Q1 of 2016. And as an administrative duty, uh, what that would, uh, would mean is that you should come in and put in this entry that you see here by just putting in the date and the 18.2% and hitting enter and loading that. Uh, so that anything that is tied to the FUSF rate calculations, mostly long distance is one of those things for interstate and international, um, that you'll be using the newest uh, rate uh, in the rate table. So, it's a pretty big you know, deal. Yeah, it is. I mean, look, if you come back, I mean, way back here, uh, back in 2007, it was like almost, yeah, it was half, uh, 2006. Yeah. So, um, and obviously, that a 9 to an 18%, that's 9%. So whatever money you're saving somebody on uh, long distance, you're also saving them 9.1% or 18.2% on the Federal Universal Service. Well, geez, that's, a, that's a lot of extra money you want to take, lay claim to and bill for. Right. So... Anyway, but it's simple. Again, you know, there's a lot of dimensions to this universe we live in, and uh, we try to make it as simple as possible. And then, of course, you know, each quarter we always – and it's, they're on our website, too. Uh, you know, um, and we always update the uh, TAM Central site. So uh, that's it. That's all I had for uh, today's meeting. Um, we're right on the money here on time. I guess I went a little over on my schedule, but we had an hour allotted. Any other items or questions, comments before we we close off? Um, not right now that I can think of. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, then I'll nope. stop the recording here.